Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about auto encoders. We'll be looking at different uh, ideas about auto encoders, like its applications, limitations, as well as uh, some of the types of auto encoders. Even before I proceed to demonstrate what exactly is an auto encoder, what are the different types of auto encoders and what are the different applications of auto encoders? May I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by talking about the agenda for today's video. There are five important points that I'll be covering in today's video. The first question is, what are auto encoders? The second question would be, what are the different applications of auto encoders? Thirdly, I'll be talking about the different types of auto encoders. Fourthly, I'll be explaining what are the advantages of auto encoders. The fifth point is what are the different limitations of auto encoders? Last but not the least, we'll be looking at the conclusion for auto encoders. Let's begin by asking a simple question. What exactly are auto encoders? There are many important points about auto encoders. The first being that it is a type of neural network. This is an example of what we call as unsupervised learning. In a typical auto encoder, we have the encoder as well as the decoder. There are many different applications of auto encoders like image compression, audio compression, feature extraction, anomaly detection. The fifth point is that it is trained using backpropagation. Sixthly, there are different variants of autoencoders. The first most popular variant of autoencoder is the denoising autoencoders. Secondly, you have what is called as the variational autoencoders. Thirdly, you have the adversarial autoencoder. Let me elaborate on some of these points as to what are autoencoders. Autoencoders are a type of neural network that can be used for unsupervised learning, which means they can learn patterns in the data without the need for explicit labels or supervision. Secondly, autoencoders consist of two main parts, the encoder and the decoder. The encoder compresses the input data into a low dimensional representation, while the, decon the decoder reconstructs the original data from the compressed representation. Thirdly, autoencoders are commonly used for data compression and dimensionality reduction, as well as image and signal processing tasks, such as denoising and image generation. Fourthly, one common type of autoencoder is the denoising autoencoder, which learns to remove noise from input data by training on corrupted versions of the original data. The fifth important point is autoencoders can also be used in conjunction with other neural network architectures, such as the CNN or the convolutional neural network, to improve their performance on tasks such as image classification and segmentation. So this is a high level perspective about auto encoders. Now let's proceed to look at the different applications of auto encoders. There are many different applications of auto encoders. The first being data compression and reconstruction. What exactly do we mean by data compression and reconstruction? Autoencoders can be used for data compression by reducing the dimensions of the input data into a smaller set of features that capture the essential information. The compressed representation can then be reconstructed back into the original format with minimal loss of information. The second important point about the application of autoencoders would be anomaly detection. 
autoencoders can be trained on a set of normal data and then used to detect anomalies in new data. These anomalies are observations that deviate significantly from the learned normal patterns. This application is particularly useful in fraud detection, cybersecurity, and medical diagnosis. The third important application area of autoencoders would be image and auto, my apologies, image and audio generation. Autoencoders can be trained to generate new images or audio by sampling the latent space of the compressed representation. This application has been used in creating new artworks, music, and sound effects in the entertainment industry. The fourth point is dimensionality reduction. Autoencoders can be used to reduce the dimensionality of a high dimensional data, such as text or images, while preserving the most important information. This can be useful in speeding up machine learning algorithms, reducing storage requirements, and improving the interpretability of the data. Last but not the least, Autoencoders can also be used in transfer learning. Autoencoders can be used as a pre-training. My apologies, let me repeat this. Autoencoders can be used as pre-training models for other deep learning tasks such as object detection, image classification, or natural language processing. The compressed representation learned by the autoencoder can be used as a feature extractor for downstream tasks, improving the efficiency and accuracy of the learning process. With these applications of autoencoders, let's now proceed to look at the different types of autoencoders. Autoencoders are a type of neural network that can be used for unsupervised learning. We are already aware of this. Now, there are many different types of autoencoders, each with its own unique architecture and characteristics. Here are some of the common types of autoencoders. There, there is the first type of autoencoder, which is called as the vanilla autoencoder. The vanilla autoencoder is a basic type of autoencoder that consists of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder compresses the input data into a low dimensional representation and the decoder reconstructs the original input from this compressed representation. The second important type of autoencoders is what is called as convolutional autoencoder. This is a type of autoencoder that uses convolutional layers in the encoder and decoder to process image data. The third important type of autoencoder would be denoising autoencoder. Denoising autoencoder is a type of autoencoder that is trained to remove noise from the data. I repeat, denoising autoencoder is a type of autoencoder that is trained to remove noise from the data. During training, the model is fed noisy input data and learns to output the original noise-free data. The fourth important type of autoencoder would be the variational autoencoder. The variational autoencoder is a type of autoencoder that learns to generate new data samples by sampling from a learned distribution. It has an encoder that maps input data to a latent space and a decoder that maps samples from the latent space back to the original data space. The fifth important type of autoencoder would be the recurrent autoencoder. This is a type of autoencoder that is designed to process sequential data, such as text or time series data. It uses recurrent neural networks in the encoder and decoder to process and generate sequences of data. Now, the sixth important type of autoencoder would be what is called as the sparse autoencoder. 
The sparse autoencoder is a type of autoencoder that is trained to produce sparse representations of the input data. The idea is to force the model to learn a more compact representation of the data, which can lead to better generalization and feature extraction. To summarize, we have six different types of autoencoders, the vanilla autoencoder, convolutional autoencoder, denoising autoencoder, variational autoencoder, recurrent autoencoder, and sparse autoencoder. With this, let's now proceed to talk about the advantages of using autoencoders. Autoencoders are a type of neural network that can be used for unsupervised learning. Now, there are many different advantages of autoencoders, which we will be seeing in the next slide. Firstly, one of the main advantages of using an autoencoder is in the field of dimensionality reduction. Let me elaborate on this point. Autoencoders are often used for dimension, dimensionality reduction, where they can learn a compressed representation of a high dimensional data. This can be useful for reducing the computational cost of downstream tasks or for visualizing data in lower dimensions. Let's now move on to the second big advantage of autoencoder, which is unsupervised learning. Autoencoders can be trained in an unsupervised manner, meaning they don't require labeled data for training. This makes them useful for tasks where labeled data is scarce or expensive to obtain. Thirdly, let's now talk about anomaly detection. Autoencoders can be used for anomaly detection where they learn to reconstruct normal examples of data and can detect when an input deviates significantly from this normal behavior. This can be useful in detecting fraud, detecting equipment failures, or detecting malicious network activity. Fourthly, autoencoders can be used for image reconstruction. Autoencoders can be used for image reconstruction where they learn to reconstruct images from a compressed representation. This can be useful for tasks such as image denoising, in painting, or super resolution. The fifth big advantage of using an autoencoder would be in generative models. Autoencoders can be used as generative models where they learn to generate new examples of data by sampling from the learned compressed representation. This can be useful for tasks such as image synthesis, text generation, or music generation. As with any technique, autoencoders have disadvantages. What are some of the important disadvantages of autoencoders? Well, there's no disputing the fact that autoencoders have several advantages. There are also important limitations and disadvantages that we need to be aware of. The first big disadvantage of autoencoder is limited interpretability. The compressed representations learned by autoencoders can be difficult to interpret as the individual components of the representation may not correspond to easily identifiable features of the input data. The second important disadvantage of using autoencoders is overfitting. Autoencoders can be prone to overfitting. I repeat, autoencoders are prone to overfitting. Let me repeat, autoencoders can be prone to overfitting, especially in the model is too complex relative to the size of the training data set. This can lead to poor performance on new unseen data. The third important disadvantage of autoencoder is lack of diversity in generated data. Autoencoders can struggle to generate diverse and realistic new examples of data, especially when the training data is highly structured or limited in diversity. 
Let's now move on to the fourth point. Auto encoders require large amounts of data. While auto encoders can be trained in an unsupervised manner, they still require a large amount of data to learn meaningful representations of the input data. Let's now talk about the fifth point. Auto encoders are computationally intensive. Training auto encoders can be computationally intensive, especially when dealing with large and complex data sets. This can require powerful hardware and longer training times. Overall, while auto encoders are a powerful tool for unsupervised learning and have many useful applications, it is important to be aware of their limitations and to carefully consider whether they are appropriate for a given task or data set. Now, let's proceed to the concluding slide. What have we learned in this video? What we have learned is autoencoders are a type of neural network that have several advantages as well as disadvantages. Here are five concluding points on autoencoders. Autoencoders can be used for unsupervised learning where they can learn a compressed representation of the input data. Secondly, autoencoders have several useful applications such as dimensionality reduction, anom anomaly detection, image reconstruction, and generative modeling. Thirdly, autoencoders have a lot of limitations. One major limitation of autoencoder is limited interpretability overfitting, lack of diversity in generated data, and computational intensity. Fourth point is, when using autoencoders, it is important to carefully consider the size and complexity of the data set, as well as the specific task or application. The fifth and the last point is, Autoencoders are a powerful tool for supervised myopologies. Autoencoders are a powerful tool for unsupervised learning and ongoing research in exploring ways to overcome some of their limitations and extend their usefulness to new domains and applications. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we've looked at what are autoencoders, what are the different types of autoencoders? What are the application areas of autoencoders? Then we looked at some of the advantages as well as disadvantages of autoencoders. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.